Hello and welcome to this film which is the second of six in the higher level energetics series. Um, once again here we're going to be looking at Hess's law calculations but now we're going to try and put into practice those definitions that you covered in the previous film. If you don't know what the definitions are, can I suggest you don't watch this film yet so that when you actually see the problems that come up in this film you can stop the film and try and attempt them yourself before you actually see the solutions. Hopefully by the end of this film you'll have an even better memory of those definitions than you do now um, and you'll have practiced using the definitions to construct equations which you can then turn into Hess's law cycles and then use those cycles and some data book values to actually calculate some enthalpy changes. Right, so just as a quick reminder of Hess's law, Hess's law says it doesn't matter how we get from A to B, the enthalpy change will always be the same. So bearing that in mind and considering some general reaction where reactants turn into products, okay? If we know the standard enthalpies of formation of the reactants and the products, then we can always find the enthalpy change for the process using this formula down here. Okay? However, it would be worthwhile seeing how it is we can prove that this formula will always work because if we can do that, we've got a better chance of constructing these cycles when we have to. Okay, so let's think about what equations I could write if I was trying to find the enthalpy change for this process here and I was given enthalpies of formation. Well, I'd have the reactants forming from their elements because that's part of what the definition of enthalpies of formation is. It has to be things forming from their elements. The same could be said about the products. Okay, and what would this side be equal to? Well, if there was more than one reactant, this would be the sum of all the standard enthalpies of formation of all the reactants. Right, and over here we'd have the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of all the products. And because the standard enthalpies of formation refer to substances forming from their elements, and these arrows have to go that way, then we can see that the standard enthalpy change for any reaction will, if so long as we know the standard enthalpies of formation, can be given by minus this plus that, which is the same as saying the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of the products minus the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of the reactants. So if you want to just use this formula, you can. But as I say, I'm going to construct the cycles because it's important that we know how to construct cycles. OK, so here's an equation for a reaction whose enthalpy change we don't know. I'm putting it on the top, but I could put it on any side of my triangle just as long as I get the arrows pointing the right way. So here is ethene reacting with hydrogen to form ethane. Now, you might not be familiar with the names of those substances, um, if you haven't done the organic topic, you might not be. Um, but what we can certainly do here is we can imagine that we made these substances from their elements. So I could have two carbons here and uh, three hydrogens, making these guys over here. Remember, one of these hydrogens is just not going to change. Okay. Um, sorry, that's a gas as well. And these same elements go together to make up products, which is also a gas. Okay? This enthalpy change that I'm trying to find, which is going in that direction, okay, will be determined by using the standard enthalpies of formation of these things. Okay? So the sum of the standard enthalpies of formation of the reactants, well, there's one mole of ethene here, so it's plus 52 kilojoules per mole. There's also one mole of hydrogen, but remember an element has a standard enthalpy of formation of zero. Here's the ethane, and its standard enthalpy of formation is minus 85 kilojoules per mole. I've got one mole of it, so I'm not multiplying that by anything, I'm just leaving it as one. Okay? So this enthalpy change here, delta H question mark, is clearly minus 52, because we're going against this arrow, plus minus 85, which is minus 85 and that equals minus 137 kilojoules per mole. Could have just used the formula, 
But remember, I'm constructing cycles in this film because it's important that we know how to do it. Okay, what about if we were told standard enthalpies of combustion in standard, instead of standard enthalpies of formation? Well, again, for a general case with reactants turning into products. If I burned all my reactants, right, then I would form the combustion products of my reactants. I don't know what's going on there. I'd form the combustion products of my reactants, right? If I burned all my products, I'd form the combustion products of my products, and I'd be going in this direction in both cases. This is the one I want to find. So there's some standard enthalpy there that I want to find. Okay, but this side here is going to be the sum of all the standard enthalpies of combustion of the reactants. And this side here is going to be the sum of all the standard enthalpies of combustion of the products. Okay, so finding this enthalpy change here is simply adding this and then taking that one away. Or in other words, this formula down here. If I'm told all the standard enthalpies of combustion, I can find the enthalpy change of a reaction by taking the sum of the enthalpies of combustion of the products from the sum of the enthalpies of combustion of the reactants. Now then, here's an example of a problem where we're given enthalpies of combustion, but I'm going to use a cycle, I'm going to construct one. So here we're being asked about the standard enthalpy of formation of buta-1,3-diene. Buta-1,3-diene is C4H6. If I'm talking about a standard enthalpy of formation, I have to have four carbons and three hydrogens in their standard states to make one mole of this substance. Okay, so this here is the standard enthalpy of formation of buta-1,3-diene. Okay, and it's going in that direction. Given that the standard enthalpies of combustion are, well, hydrogen has an enthalpy of combustion of minus 286. Carbon has an enthalpy of combustion of minus 394. But remember, enthalpies of combustion talk about one mole of a substance burning. So this is going to have to be times 3 and the carbon times 4, what direction are we going in? Well, we're burning these things. What are we going to form? Four carbon dioxides and three waters, also in their standard states. Okay, what are we going to form if we burn this? Because we've got the enthalpy of combustion of that as well. Well, we're going to form exactly the same products, and the enthalpy change is going to be minus 2542 kilojoules per mole. Because... Um, We've only got one mole of this, and the enthalpy of combustion talks about one mole burning. So now I can find the standard enthalpy of formation of buta-1,3-diene by adding all these up, adding that, taking away this side, because I'm going against that arrow, so sum of this minus minus 2542, and that gives me 108, so delta standard enthalpy of formation, equal to 108 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so there's my answer. I could have used the formula, but again, I'm showing you how to construct a cycle by using your definitions to be able to write equations. This is a really important skill, as we'll see very shortly, because this next question has a bit of mix and match to it. Okay, we're not told enough information to be able to use either of the formulas. So this time I'm being asked to find the standard enthalpy of this reaction here. I'm going to put it on the top. Remember, it doesn't matter where I put it. 2H2S turning into 3S and 2H2O. What am I told? Well, I'm told the standard enthalpy of formation of hydrogen sulfide. There it is. So I could be going from the elements 2H2 plus 2S's. I could be going that way making that, but then I'd be making two moles of it, not just one, so I'd have minus 20.2 times 2 here. This is the equation I'm interested in, going in that direction. Okay, what do I have over here? Well, I've got, oh, so, oh, so sorry, I've got the enthalpy of formation of water, so I could be forming two H2Os, but in that case I'd have to multiply the 286 by 2, right, because there's the standard enthalpy of formation refers to one mole. Now then, what else is going on over here? Well, I'm told the enthalpy of combustion of sulfur. This is 
the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is burned in oxygen. Okay, so S plus O2 would make SO2, and that would have an enthalpy change of 297. And look, here's the oxygen that I need to make my water, and now I've got three sulfurs, three sulfurs here as well. Okay, delta H question mark is what I'm trying to find, so I need to add this lot up. I need to subtract, or at least I need to have, add that lot up, that's going to be X, but I'm going against this arrow, so it's going to be minus X, Here's y plus y, because so I'm going with that arrow. And if I plug the numbers in here, I hope I get minus 234.6 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so there we go. That, that is a more complex question because I'm not given all the enthalpies of formation or all the enthalpies of combustion. I have to construct a cycle using a little bit of know-how and, and knowledge of the definitions there. Okay, so it's getting to be quite advanced now, which is why it's higher level, and um, hopefully now you've practiced using the definitions of these standard enthalpies, which we defined in the first film, and we've constructed some cycles using the equations we got, and hopefully these calculations that we did using some data book values, hopefully they made sense. If you've got any questions or any comments to make, please come and see me or post a comment on YouTube.